The Twin Cities dance world is filled with choreographers and dancers who've been on the scene for two and even three decades or longer, but few have been as adventurous or as daring in their work as Judith Howard. And Judith really is a success story here. She spent a number of years in what she calls a religious order, and she didn't receive her MFA until her 50s, and now she runs the dance program at Carleton College, and she's back on her feet doing her own choreography. We're going to talk with Judith about her latest artistic enterprises, her creative reunion with the zesty April Sel and how she maintains her artistry within the confines of academia on this Three Minute Egg. I got this job at Carleton and it's taken over and I haven't been able to do a lot of my work and I was just so desirous and desperate to do some of my own work so I just plunged in. I always had this tug, pull, push with uh, dance being self-serving or what am I doing for the world? I always had that sort of feeling too of helping others when I was little, you know, just so I had this sort of push-pull with what am I doing for people if I'm doing dance? And as you ask it, I realized that that's why maybe these social issues or things that I care about come through. And yet I'm also, I also like to push against, I was the kid who always threw the tantrum and was belligerent and I like to push against things so I like to be a little bit of an abrasive I like a little bit of abrasion and I think it's important um, you know to be a provocateur somehow you know with April the alchemy happens and we just start messing around together and we came up with this this concept which was very much related to the environmental we studied um, the plastic ocean, you know, the island in the ocean, and studied a bit about, you know, the, our little take was the little fish who was found with 27 pieces of plastic in it. April's whole theme was around fish eggs and the birth and life, and so that played into her movement. And mine was definitely about the plastic train and being a threatening force and threatening April and, and then we wanted conflict and harmony at the same time, in the same moment, so we, that was the approach and the kiss of the two fish. The plastic train, the plastic moat, took such a long time to make, create, figure out how to drag it. We filled my whole backyard with plastic, hosed it down, you know. The thing about that piece is that was hard for us is that we had actual costumes and we usually wear nothing. There's that, definitely that thread in my work, sort of a social consciousness thread, but I try not to be real overt or, you know, agitprop about it. And um, I, for five years I did kind of anti-war. All my pieces were kind of anti-war. And this whole environmental thing, you know, I usually send down sort of a plumb line emotionally to find what work is happening for me, and it either comes out of emotion and fabric. So. Uh, you know, textiles and emotion. Those are the two things that kind of ignite me. Mad King Thomas, who invited me to share the show, they were students of mine and Becky Heiss and Sharon Ferocious. And we, um, and you know, just watching them have the freedom of their own, you know, what is their freedom and are they pursuing that, just makes me feel like, oh, there's a place, you know, there's a place. You have to question the arts in any institution. I think you have to question that. Certainly the support is fantastic. Um, so there's that, there's a tension.